Oh, okay. It looks like my mic was muted. I'm sorry. So um, I wanted to just kind of pop in everybody to, uh, really quickly as I end my work week, you know, um, so hopefully, hopefully everybody's had a great end to their work week and is off to a great weekend. I'm glad the work week is over. And so in a moment, I'm going to be setting myself up with a nice drink. I haven't uh, drank all week, really. So I am looking forward to having me a nice smooth glass of Crown and kicking back and relaxing. Um, I am going to appear on uh, the candy shop later this evening. So I plan on being there to give my input if I don't drink too much and pass out. But I wanted to come on just briefly and, of course, add my condolences and thoughts to the loss of a legend. And, of course, we're talking about Cicely Tyson. What can we say? Um, if there is the epitome of actors, of, of blackness, of our grace, it would be Cicely Tyson and probably Sidney Poitier. They are the, the two that stand head and shoulders above everybody else in my mind. Their body of work, uh, the grace, the class by which they've carried themselves uh, cannot be understated and it cannot be matched. Um, and so 2021, wow, you know, we're off to about uh, 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 something close to the way 2020 started. You know, you think back a year ago, you know, we started off with deaths, uh, with deaths, I should say. Uh, the biggest one at this time of year was the loss of Kobe Bryant. And here we are um, one month into the year. And in the last week alone, you know, we've lost, you know, Hank Aaron, uh, Cloris Beachman, I think that's your name, uh, actress, um, Larry King, um, Cicely Tyson, and I think it's one more I'm missing somebody else. Uh, but yeah, these are legends. And I, and I know that these are individuals that are high up in age and we know that death is inevitable, but still it's always just devastating when it happens, you know, the expectation is for these people to live forever, you know, no matter how old we get as humans, death is so unnatural. Um, and then the tragedy part of it is we're losing quality, good people that are contributing members to society. And you have so many others that are hanging around and I'm not saying I want them to die, but damn, you know, so, but that's neither here nor there. I wanted to just for a few moments, just speak on, uh, you know, my feelings, uh, my personal uh, feelings and respect and admiration for Cicely Tyson. You know, um, I was watching this piece uh, here on uh, CBS this morning where Gail uh, King was uh, interviewing Cicely Tyson. And so I'm not going to play the whole video that owns the rights to it. So, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of bring it up on screen where you could see and it's a short interview, but it's worth watching. Uh, Gail does a very good job encapsulating, you know, in a brief way, what Cicely Tyson's uh, career brought to the table, her legacy, uh, and the interview. Literally, this was done a couple of days ago. Um, she had just released a book. And so it captures the authentic woman in all her glory. Even at 96 years old, her beauty is still stunning. Her grace is, jumps off the screen. She speaks in such a aristocratic manner. Every word comes across so deliberate, so articulate, so intelligent. And I just think this is somebody we should hold up to the light as, you know, what we aspire to be. And so I don't know if you can hear this. So I'm going to play a little portion of it. So I don't know if you can hear it through your feed, but right now she's talking about literally being molested by her first acting coach. And I'm hoping you guys can hear this. If not, this is a good watch. Do yourself a favor. If you can't hear it, if you watch it, she teared up a little bit and she mentioned here that all these years later, you know, she's 96. This happened to her when she was like 30. So Gail brought up the fact that this was a Me Too moment before we called it Me Too. 
And I thought it was so remarkable how she talked about how she handled it. Went home and quite naturally felt violated on every level. Here's this white guy who's an acting coach who she respected, uh, who violated her. And she ended up coming back and Gail asked her, why did you come back? And her answer was that I had to go back to get what I needed to get where I wanted to go. I thought that was so profound because I'm one of those people that when I look at the Me Too movement and I appreciate its value, I think in many cases, though, it's it's, it's unfairly being used and it's weaponized. Um, and I can appreciate the fact that you know, one of our regal legends talks about the fact that for her, it happened to her. And clearly, she hadn't talked about this. And I'm not saying that women who experience this should keep it to themselves, but I am showing that the way she handled it, you know, it made her stronger. She still went back and got what she had to get out of this coaching gig, whatever. It turned into who she is, the legacy. Um, and she didn't come forward and use it as a weapon. I'm not saying women shouldn't. There are situations where it's definitely deserved. So I'm not focusing on that. But I just love the fact that she didn't let this define her. She didn't let it stop her. And even in talking about it some 60 years later, She's not blaming anything other than what how she internalized it and used it as fuel. I am only commenting on that part of it. Other parts of the interview, she talks about her relationship with uh, Miles Davis. For many of you, you may not know that she was married to Miles Davis. And if you know anything about Miles Davis, brilliant musician, not so good human being, you know, and look around. We know people like that right now. People are messy. They're faulty. They're broken. They're damaged. And she talked about her marriage to Miles Davis. And Robin asked, I'm sorry, Gail asked her, you know, to kind of talk about that a little bit. And I love the way she handled that. She talks about how love can also coexist with brokenness. So on my show, Real Talk for Real Men, we examine all these different aspects of what it means to be in a healthy relationship, how to get out of an unhealthy one, the signs to look for in terms of what we pick in people, how do we relate to one another? So to hear, again, someone of her stature, talk about a man that cheated on her, physically, verbally, emotionally abused her, was a womanizer, but to still speak of him with such love and respect because for her, she was able to separate his acts from his humanity. And I talk about that quite a bit. We have flawed people amongst us, you know, that who've contributed a great deal to society, whether through their music, their filmography, you know, their, their art, you know, on every day, and yet they may not be the best human beings. And so I've always thought it's very important to be able to separate and compartmentalize the person from the acts. None of us are perfect. You know, Jesus asked the question, you know, some 4,000 years ago, let he that's without sin cast the first stone. You know, if we got back to that very fundamental principle, Nobody would get hit with rocks because everybody has sins, skeletons and whatnot. But as flawed people, there are still some of those that have contributed to society in beautiful ways and their art doesn't die. We don't think of Miles Davis and say, what a horrible human being and he cheated on our legend. So we're going to cut his music off and we're going to mute him. We still think of him as one of the greatest jazz musicians to ever walk this earth. So we have to be careful not to selectively pick out those people that we want to ostracize and mute them just because they don't fit our narrative of what we think they should be as a human being. 
And so I just wanted to highlight sit and shout out Cicely Tyson for being more than just the actor that sits on Mount Rushmore. We know her craft can't be denied. There, there might there might be five other actors that can match her craft wise. And I'm talking male or female. So her legacy in terms of her art is indelible. It's it's going nowhere. This woman did it all. Emmys, Oscars, Tonys, she did it all. She did it with grace and style. She never played a role that uh, was was beneath her as an individual or denigrated her race. So she's she's got that in spades. But what I appreciate more is, about her is who she was as a person. And then as I've been over the last couple of days kind of adjusting to this, I've been looking up background, all of the different things and different ways that she, what she meant to people more than as an actor. Um, Tyler Perry, uh, he adores her. And we found out that when he discovered how little she was paid for uh, such movies like Sounder and the autobiography of, of Jane Pittman, which are <laughs> pieces of art, classical art. She was paid such little for it. Tyler Perry took it upon himself that from the moment he started casting her, he's paid her three and four times what her asking price were, was. That's how much he adored her. That's how much you appreciated her. And we hear all of these stories, you know, how she was godmother to his child and what she meant to Oprah Winfrey and different people. She's a giant, you know, and this is not about honoring people unnaturally, you know, um, as a spiritual person, you know, we don't want to deify anybody, but as close as we can get to honoring somebody, yeah, she deserves it. And I'm so grateful. This is the last part I'll comment on. I'm so grateful that she was one of those that received her flowers while she was alive. Too many times, especially in African-American culture, we do not show the level of love and respect for our own until it's too late. The Richard Pryors, the Red Foxes, you know, the Ruby D and Ozzie Davises. You know, a lot of these people have passed on and they didn't receive their flowers while they were alive. Sometimes as African-Americans, we're so busy pointing at the, 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 the faults of our, you know, celebrities and what they did until we don't focus on their greatness. You know, Whitney Houston has a voice that will never be matched. But while she was alive. Everybody talked about her addiction to drugs and things like that. You know, James Brown, Barry White, Luther Van Ross, the list could go on and on and on. When we honor these people posthumously, they're dead. And it's great to name an award in their, in their honor. But I'm going to go back to Tyler Perry. When he opened up his studios right here in Atlanta, he created sound stages for people he admired and respected. And it wasn't just people that were dead. These were people that he respects and deals with now. There's a Halle Berry soundstage. There's a Denzel Washington soundstage. There's a Cicely Tyson soundstage. So in her lifetime, in her 96 years, she got to get her flowers before she left here. Obama awarded her. Uh, one of the highest honors you could achieve as a as a city, private citizen. She talked about how special it was to be to live to see an African American president. We think about the pandemic we are going through. This woman lived through the Tuskegee experiments. She lived a full lifetime, and that this interview was done just a couple of days before she passed. It it puts into a whole new perspective. When we think about somebody's life and death, she didn't lose her faculties right up until the end. She worked. She had projects ongoing. And so I just wanted to lastly say, let's honor our, our own while they're alive. 
and they don't have to be famous to honor them. Our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, our uncles, you know, our older brothers and sisters, there's a wealth of wisdom that we can pluck from while they're alive. My family is originally from Meridian, Mississippi, and I have a sister who still lives in Meridian, Mississippi, and I went to visit her a few years ago. A lot of people don't know this about me and my family. Um, the three civil rights workers that were slain that helped kick off the civil rights movement, um, Cheney, the black one, of course, that's my third cousin. My family experienced racism in the most brutal way when Ku Klux Klan literally bombed our home and was looking for family members to lynch. That's what led to my family migrating up north to New York City. And so a couple of few years back, rather, I went to visit my sister, you know, and it's one thing to read about history in Jet Magazine and Ebony or, or, or on the Internet. It's a whole nother ball game to see where these things happen. And my sister was able to take me around and show me things in a way that it brought history to me in a way that you you can't read about this because it's a whole nother ball game to see where the house was located and how far they had to walk from the house to get to their school, knowing that at any moment they could be lynched, beaten, stoned. And to see this with my own eyes, that's a whole different level of respect and I got this from my sister. And so I implore each and every one of you, don't wait till your family members are dead and gone. Go put in a call to your to your mothers, your aunts, your uncles, grandparents, if they're still alive. Ask those questions. You know, humble yourself and ask those questions because these are individuals that probably certainly never thought they would see in their lifetime an African-American president. And so they can tell you about things in a way that no history book can match. And so honor them now, give them their flowers now. So I wanted to kind of say that to the audience. I hope each and every last one of you uh, tunes in to my live shows every Wednesday, every Saturday from eight to 10 o'clock. I hope that uh, you can go to my channel uh, on YouTube. It only takes a couple of minutes to hit the subscribe button. I'm building my fan base one subscription at a time. Um, unlike, you know, some of the other things that's out there, I'm trying to talk about some things that matter, that uplifts us, you know, and it's not so serious, but you know, I hope that my channel brings more than just the foolishness and fuckery that we see on other platforms that we are talking about some things that matter, but we keep it light. We keep it fun. And most of all, we keep it real. And so, yes, real talk for real men is on every Wednesday, every Saturday, eight to 10. Uh, you're more than welcome to log in, bring your comments, bring your questions, even suggestions for topics. I'm open to all of that. But on this day, as I sign out, I want to give my heartfelt prayers uh, out to the Tyson family, uh, to her family. We have lost a legend. And I wanted each and every one of you to think about that. And if nothing else, take just a quick moment to pause and just appreciate what this giant meant to all of us. She belongs to all of us. And I don't care what happens and what gets said. Don't let anybody take her away from us. We have to claim our giants because nobody else will. And don't let anybody shit on her name because she is a legend. She was a living legend. She's a giant and the mark she's made in her field with her craft. We're going to not let anybody put, put any marks on that. So to the great, great Cicely Tyson, we love you. We loved you and we appreciate you. God bless you and your family. Everybody enjoy your weekend.